here we have the C switch board. Uh, as with most circuit boards, the components are placed on the side that has the white silk screen. As you can see, there's no image on the other side. Start off with the smallest components first. We start with the socket for the fuse. If you're not using the fuse, you can just join these two pads with a piece of uh, wire. 24 gauge wire would be fine. Clean the iron. Solder the pads on. Next comes the push button switches. These snap down into place. Verify they're down solid. And once again, solder them in place. You're looking for a nice clean solder joints. No blobbing, having the iron set at the right temperature. If you have a temperature controlled iron, is ideal. Just enough to make a good solid connection. A quick check, make sure everything's square. <clears throat> Next goes the tether connector. You need to put this in first by putting the pins in the hole, hold it in place and then snapping it down verifying that all of the pins are still through the holes as desired. Clean the iron. board, check that it's square. <clears throat> Next we put on these switches. To do this we take off the top nut of both the switches, place <clears throat> the switches in the circuit board, then place the cover back down on top, having the center hole towards you when the switches are pointing away from you. The cover on, gently screw down the retaining clips. This is done to keep the switches square and in position while we're soldering. Flip this upside down. <clears throat> on the first couple of joints, make sure that the circuit board is pressed flat. Otherwise, the switches will be at a funny angle. I like to do a couple of the pads and then check that everything's still square. Quick check, everything looks good. Continue finishing up the remaining pads. The last uh, piece that's put on the board is actually the power cable. If you do this before you put the um, alligator clips on the cable, you can't make a mistake. But if you already have the clips on the cable, <coughs> make sure that you pass the cable through the hole in the circuit board. And I like to tie a knot. And then you want to identify which is the positive and which is the negative conductor. The positive conductor in this place, in this case, is going to be the, the copper one. And you want to place these through these poles from above, fold them over, and then solder them. Make sure you get good coverage. Make sure the iron is nice and hot so that you get all of the conductors tinned. Once that's done, you want to snip off these wires. <clears throat> At which point, you're ready to go. Now, 
if you're using the fuse, I'm going to snip off enough so there's about no more than a quarter of an inch. Place this in the socket and push it down firmly and it will seat right down in there. At this point, um, you're ready to go. Uh, the best thing to do is, before you actually power up the unit, is to check it. Uh, I like to put a couple of screws in it before I check it. Um, oopsie. Wrong screws. Silver screws. The easiest way to check for um, any short circuits on the board is to hook up a continuity meter or an ohm meter on the um, two power conductors um, and then simply activate the switches and if a short occurs between the plus and the minus you know that you have a short on your board. Um, once you've done that test you can continue to put the circuit board in place. Uh, once you've done the four screws, you can put the caps on the small push button switches. They require a fair bit of force. Once they're on, they protect your fingers from those small pins. Place the cover on. You may have to scrunch this down a little bit because of the knot. No need to put the screws, uh, no need to put the nuts back on the switches. They're held in place very firmly. Um, this switch box is just like the regular sea perch switch box. The two switches at the top, the one on the right is the down, the one on the left is the up for vertical, the right hand switch is the right hand motor, and the left hand switch is the left hand motor. Now you're ready to go. You need to put the uh, RJ45 connector on your tether and plug it in.